we're going to be learning about hybrid orbitals. Now, hybrid orbitals are kind of a weird thing. The word hybrid, Mr. Sams was telling us about this movie just a minute ago. What's it called, Mr. Sams? Napoleon Dynamite. I guarantee you every single one of our students has seen it. You're well, the only person in the room who hasn't seen the movie. I'm an old guy, okay? <laughs> and apparently in Napoleon Dynamite, there's this uh, critter that is made called it's a, a... It's a drawing of a critter. Oh, it's only a drawing of a critter? Yeah, it's See, called a, I don't know a liger. A liger. Apparently it is a tiger and a lion mixed together. And um, apparently the animal is sterile. Right, I'm being very scientific. Apparently it's a funny movie, but I've missed it. But today we want to talk about hybrid orbitals. Okay. Now to illustrate that, I have brought with me today some chemicals here. All right, I have three chemicals. It's actually just colored water. But I have um, actually four, uh, uh, four beakers and two chemicals. I have over here uh, a blue uh, colored water. And then I've got orange, orange, and orange. Now an orbital, if you recall, is... There are S orbitals, there are P orbitals, there are D and F orbitals. And so my analogy here is that the blue over here represents an S orbital, and the oranges represent a P orbital, so like 2S and 2P. Now, when orbitals are hybridized, they get all mixed up. So let me illustrate that by pouring them into my large flask. I'm going to pour all of my chemicals into a large flask. Remember, each of these containers represents an orbital. But when they become a bonding orbital, which we'll talk about in a minute, they become one continuous orbital. Instead of having one separate s orbital and three separate p orbitals, we have four orbitals that are all the same, and we call them actually we call them sp3 orbitals, and they're all the same. And as you see, we've now made it purple. It was blue and orange, and now we've made the combination of purple. So let's see if we can see how that works with our lesson today. So today we're going to do um, hybrid orbitals, and this is podcast 9.1 in our lessons, and I'm trying to get my pen. Yep, hybridization and the localized electron model. We're actually now, by the way, in chapter nine. So we have now moved out of chapter eight and now we're in hybrid nine. nine. Um, so let's kind of talk ourselves through this. All right, what is hybridization? Uh, it's, well, you just kind of showed us. It's when you take two things and kind of smush them together into something that has properties of both. Yeah, so you kind of get a mixture of things, okay? All right, and now hybrid orbitals, and what we can illustrate that is I had an s orbital, let's say a 2s orbital, and then I have um, three 2p orbitals. And uh, I bet you can hear us better now. The mic's in the way. And um, what happens is they convert to um, one orbital that is now um, four um, orbitals. And this is called the sp3 orbital. These are all the same, or these are different. You see, um, these orbitals here are actually called atomic orbitals because they relate to atoms. And these are called molecular orbitals because they are now related to molecules. Molecules, mm. molecular, atomic. That's the name. Yeah, so hopefully that kind of makes some sense to you there, okay? All right. And then we've already talked about that, so that's unimportant. Now, let me give you an analogy. I'm not sure, Sam, if you've seen this, but mm. many people know that there are things such as roses. In fact, it's Valentine's Day this week. It right is. Here, where at least you may be watching this totally non-Valentine's Day. But it's Valentine's Day. And you know there are red roses. Yes. And there are yellow roses. Mm -hmm. But you know that if you are a really good rose person, a gardener or horticulturalist or whatever you call it, do you know that you could take that rose while it's growing and you could cut a piece out of it? I think a different color would be better here, huh? You could cut a little piece out of that rose. That really worked. And mm -hmm. um, you could graft this yellow rose into this while this rose is growing. Now this rose, of course, has been cut. And then if you were to literally tape it together over time, you know what would happen to this rose? Well, what's going to happen? It would turn into a peach-colored rose. And they called those roses hybrid roses. 
So they actually hybridize roses, just kind of like we did with the colored water just a few minutes ago. You can hybridize roses. So all you got to do is graft one in. So all the new um, flavors, or that's probably not the right word, but all the new colors varieties. and varieties, that's the word I'm looking for, of roses, many of them have been hybridized, and they're called hybrid orbitals, or not orbitals, hybrid roses. Okay, so let's take a look at this from a, a more of a pictorial perspective. This is actually the picture that I was attempting to draw. Here I have atomic orbitals right here, kind of here. So let's right. take one atomic. S and three P's. So one S and three P's, and when you pour them all together, so to speak, you make four orbitals that are called sp three orbitals. All right, and the sp three orbitals are the four purple orbitals. And they actually have different shapes, too. We didn't really get into that. But this is the, you know, the spherical shape. And these are, of course, our classic P shapes. But the sp3 orbitals um, are, they look like this. And then when you smush them together, they look like this. Hey, it looks kind of tetrahedral to yeah, me. Yeah, it is the form mm -hmm. of a tetrahedron. Interesting. And that's kind of the whole idea. Okay, now that's, and then here is another picture of this. Um, here is the three 2p orbitals, and then the 2s, and then they become sp3. And actually, from an energetic perspective, here's the s orbital, here are the p orbitals, and the sp3 is a little bit less than the p's. And they're all equal. And they're all equal. Yeah. That's important. And this is what it would look like, again, um, with uh, the CH4 molecule, and it is the, the corners of a tetrahedron, because there are four shapes that so makes the tetrahedral shape. And this would still be tetra sp3 orbital, and you can see a lone pair. This, if you can't really tell, this is ammonia NH3. Yeah, that's one we of those draw, shapes that's derived from the tetrahedral shape. Right, remember? A pyramidal. A pyramidal shape. We pyramidal. Talked about pyramidal. <laughs> All right. Now, we can also have, this is actually, actually, just a, let me back up and say, this is essentially a four-cloud model right here. Yeah. So we call that, and we call that sp3. Okay. Now, if I have a three-cloud model, You've got an s orbital, and you've got two p orbitals. Now, I know there's a third p orbital, but it's going to do something else we'll learn yes. about in a little it's bit. It's not actually going to hybridize and bond. It's just going to hang out. It stays as an atomic orbital, actually. Yeah. And so if you take an s and then two of the p orbitals, and you smoosh them together, you get three new ones, three green ones, in the, at least in the color scheme we have going on here. And then they take the shape of a trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. That's just the three-cloud model, right? And we call this s p Two hybridized, and notice we have we have the three two p orbitals which we talked about, and the two s orbitals, and they turn into three two s three s p two orbitals, and then the two p orbital does not change. Nope. All right, and then you can see a picture of that. Yeah. Actually, this is a pretty good picture. I like this picture, as you can see right here, here, and here. That is the s p two orbital. And notice they are all in the single plane. They're in the plane, planar. and then it, the blue here is the p orbital. Right, it's the which, unhybridized atomic orbital. Yes, exactly. And then when the you have two sp2 orbitals getting together, it would look something like this, and the electrons are shared in these mm -hmm. particular orbitals. This would be CH, well, C2H4. C2H4, yeah. And there's something else going on there which we'll learn about later. Yeah. 